Hi, welcome to Horfield Astronomy again. Uh, hope you're all keeping well out there under the present circumstances. This video is an update on the equipment uh, I have and the changes in the past few months. Without further ado, let's go out and have a look and uh, I'll talk you through it. Cheers. Now the original pier itself, which I built back at the beginning of last year, was initially built out of an eight foot drain pipe, four foot of which was buried into the ground and cemented in, leaving the other four foot to form the pier. Now this was filled with cement and rebar for reinforcement and to make it uh, nice and solid. This was all squared up and at the time uh, I made a pier adapter out of wood to affix my uh, EQ3 Pro mount. The first upgrade since then is the pier adapter itself. I bought two pre-cut PVC sheets. I attached four bolts to the two sheets to form the pair adapter. Uh, these can be independently adjusted to suit and uh, this gives me the ability obviously to make sure everything is flush and everything is ready for the mount to be put in place. The mains power comes from an extension lead that I've attached to the pair. This runs back to the shed. Also I have a Wi-Fi outlet that connects to the broadband in the house to give me Wi-Fi in the shed itself. All the connected devices run back to the USB hub. This is a 7 port USB 3 StarTech hub. I ordered this from Amazon and I've had a few hubs and I have to say that this is the best one that I've used so far. It's housed in a metal casing so it's uh, perfectly good for outdoor use and it uh, performs extremely well. I'd uh, recommend it. My latest upgrade is my new AVX mount by Celestron, which replaces my earlier Skywatcher EQ3 mount. The main reason why I bought this mount is because of the weight capacity and it's better for imaging compared to my earlier mount. I can now image up to five minutes and beyond. The mount has periodic error correction, an auto guider port, and also it has the ability to image across the meridian, which means I may not have to meridian flip with this new mount. Everything is controlled via the hand controller, although I do connect this direct to the PC uh, from the hand controller to the hub. And in turn, this goes back to the main computer in the shed. It has a built-in polar scope, although this does not come originally with the mount, you have to buy it separately, which is what I've done. The latitude range allows the mount to perform between 7 degrees and 77 degrees latitude, um, and it's a very smooth mount to use, and works very well with my computer equipment. Now we come to my wide field scope. This is the Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED doublet. This is a 72 millimeter objective lens and a 420 millimeter focal length, which is f5.8. It has a dual speed 2 inch Crayford focuser with 11 to 1 ratio, which is backlash free. The lenses are multi coated objective lenses. I chose this scope one because it is relatively lightweight with a weight of 1955 grams and also because I do enjoy my wide field astrophotography. Although later on I will be fitting my new Ioptron RC6 to this setup, but that will be another video. Now moving on to the guide scope. The guide scope I have is a 50 millimeter guide scope that I picked up off eBay. Uh, I paid about 70 pounds for this guide scope, but it works fine. Um, there's no problems with it. It's uh, very good when it comes to guiding. The guide camera itself is a T7C, which I got from eBay as well. The sensor size is a third of an inch Aptina ARO130CS color sensor. Pixel size is 3.75 by 3.75. And for a budget camera, it's uh, very good indeed. Uh, you can't go wrong. Also attached to the scope is a Bader 30mm Sky Surface 3 Red Dot Finder. I don't use that often, but sometimes I 
find it's very useful when trying to find objects relative to the sky to what I can see on my computer. And finally, my last piece of equipment is the Altair Hypercam 183C Pro 20 megapixel color astro imaging camera. It's internally fan cooled and it has a 20 megapixel Sony IMX183 sensor. For those used to DSLRs and wanting to get into CCD, I would recommend this camera as an excellent next step. And finally, we move into the shed and the software I use for my astro imaging. Originally, I was using Astrophotography Tool, PhD2 and Stellarium. I've changed from Astrophotography Tool now and I'm using Nina. Now, Nina is very, very similar to Sequence Generator Pro. Although the great thing about Nina is it's free. There's nightly updates and it does a lot of stuff. Uh, I will be doing a future video and a review on Nina, uh, but from the point of view of this video today, it's just an overview of the software. Uh, Nina gives you the ability to frame your target, also gives you the ability to create a sequence for the night's astro imaging. As I said, I use PHD2 as well for my guidance software. You can't go any better than this, I believe. I've always used PhD2 and it's always done really, really well. I also use Stellarium as well. I find this um, software uh, very good. It's a lot easier to use than SkyX and the like. And um, I always find it's very easy. It communicates with all the other software packages. It communicates with the mount and everything outside um, and all in all um, I'm very happy with the software that I'm using at the moment. So there you go guys uh, thanks very much for joining me on this uh, review of the update of my equipment uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't done or already and uh, stay safe out there and clear skies and I'll see you again soon.